Yeah. All right. I'm going to call to order the Superior Board of Education work session, uh, September 6, 2023. Uh, first order of business on the agenda is for it's, uh, it's a point. <coughs> Treasurer Pro Tem, while uh, Mr. Dreer is out of the country, and I am going to uh, appoint Mr. Fuller. Second. Mark your second. Since, since you have appointed. I guess I have made it. Okay, so okay. I'll make the motion. All right. Thank you for the second. <laughs> Motion. Second. And I'll take roll call. Mr. Bennington? Yes. Mrs. Larimer? Yes. Dr. Reffert? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Okay. Congratulations, Rick. Enjoy the week. Um, <laughs> and then, so to open the meeting, uh, roll call, please. Ms. Larimer? Here. Mr. Bennington? Here. Mrs. Eubank. Dr. Refford? Here. Mr. Ro Pullman? Here. Uh, we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, what did he do? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I should have mentioned that you get an email from Ms. Eubank saying that she was going to be unable to attend this morning work session. Uh, safety briefing. Uh, I will dispense with most of this other than to note that we are located at 200 East 7th Street. Next item, adopt the kind of motion to adopt the proposed agenda. Second. Okay. Dr. Effort, Ms. Larimer, and roll call, please. Dr. Effort? Yeah. Ms. Larimer? Yes. Mr. Bennington? Yes. Mr. Pullman? Yes. Okay, that takes us to the superintendent's report. All right, thank you. Um, I'll sit over a little closer, so I just had a couple quick things to review. And I know we do have some um, uh, agenda items for personnel purposes. Just as the beginning of the year is underway, we're trying to, to lock down all of our staff. So I know we try to avoid that at um, work sessions, but um, we want to take an opportunity to, to hire staff and move things. So, that resonates with you. Resonates with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're, uh, we're in decent shape that we can keep things passed down and have done here. So done here. Um, update on, on status. So, so I, I wanted to highlight a couple of uh, areas. And first of all, we appreciate Coach allowing us to be here this morning. And, Appreciate the board um, letting us, uh, you know, having us to go out to all the buildings or many of the buildings to, to get inside to be able to tour the buildings and, and see what goes on. So it's a, it's a good reminder, I think, to of, of why we do what we do. And um, being, being in this setting certainly brings us to that understanding. So um, I'm going to move. slides we've started to get some uh, questions about the bond issue and um, we've started to compile those we have an FAQ also we will be uh, sharing at the next board meeting kind of a rundown of some of those kind of questions that we're receiving but um, wanted to kind of circle on uh, this this piece here so, so one of the things that, that you know, we talked about is this bond issue and what does it bring you know, to the district. Um, and when you look at where we will be with our student projections in 2040, and you look at the needs of the district to get us to 2040 and beyond, it's, it's a pretty simple um, understanding that, that um, you know, we need 105 classrooms to get us there. So as people begin to talk about, well, what does this bond issue do? It, it primarily focuses on you know, getting us as much need the classrooms, so 105. So the question becomes, well, if we don't have the bond issue, where will we house the students if the 105 classrooms aren't going to be delivered through a bond issue? And 
think that's that's an interesting conversation that we'll have to tease out over the next couple of weeks. That that has been a question, um, and we'll kind of do a deeper dive into, into what that means. Um, when you look at how this project and the cost of it is broken down, you can see here in this graphic that um, the new elementary is, is 25% of the cost of this of the amount of funds that this bond issue will raise. 25% of it will go to a new elementary building that will house the eight hundred students. So how do you get to that 105? 25% of it is a new elementary school. And when you look at the, um, the high school, which is our other pressure point, uh, besides the elementary, 23% of this bond issue is going to go towards that. So, so nearly 50% of the bond issue is for new classroom space at a new elementary building and adding on to the high school. And then when you throw in the additions, um, you know, the deferred, um, the additions at, at Frank and Toth, the building that we have here, which we'll tour quick, you know, um, a brief tour afterward, and those additions is almost another 18%. So we're really looking at almost 80% of this bond issue is going directly towards getting us to relieving those pressure points that we have and we're feeling at the elementary level and at the high school. And then the remaining pieces of it is fixing up, we're in the older section of the building, um, making sure that this part of the building, and we're gonna go through the part of the building that was built in the early 1950s, that that area is secure for the next 20, 30, 40 years, uh, the next generation of students. So I think that's really important. So, so when you look at what this does and what it delivers to the district, it is spot on our needs and what our students need. Uh, um, this is something we've gotten a few questions about the um, Steinecker Stadium and the amount of funds that are being used towards that. So we wanted to be clear, and, and here you have a, a, a kind of an overview uh, picture of the stadium. So you see I-75 in the, you know, kind of uh, to, the, to, the east of, to the east of it, uh, the stadium. You have the tree line, the creek, and the neighborhood to the south of it. And then you have, you know, the, there's two bright yellow stars. One of them is the, the main entry into the stadium that I think most people are familiar with. When you pull in, there's the curve, and, and there's the entry right there. You see another newer entry that was added behind um, the Huskinson Center. And, and as of today, those are the only two entry points to Steinecker Stadium. Two, two or three weeks ago in Oklahoma, there was a, an event at an athletic event, a football game, and um, it was in a stadium. Brought a lot of attention and focus to, to you know, safety at these events. In Northwest Ohio, we, we know that, that there was a, a school that had an event. And after that event, we gathered in the stadium with our first responders from the city, and fire and EMT and police. And we walk the property and we realize that we have some unique challenges at the stadium. Um, when you look at the stadium with I-75 to the back, we know that that is an area that we're not going to be exiting hundreds and hundreds of people out onto I-75. We also know the creek in the neighborhood presents a, a significant challenge. And we began to identify the need to, to have other um, exits where we can evacuate a number of people. If there is an event that takes place, you know, in the parking lot area, that's where everybody goes out of the building or out of the stadium, and that's a problem. So when you look at the stars, you know, that, that run parallel to I-75, um, possibly going along the fence line, um, there's enough line land there for the creek to get out that opposite way, and then behind the, the visitors, um, section of the stadium uh, seating, um, we understand that there's other opportunities to create ways to evacuate. And we often think, because it's been in the news, like it was in the Midwest, where there's an act of violence or an active shooter you know, in the vicinity of the stadium, but what if the, a truck overturns behind the stadium when there is an event? You know, the only way is to go along the, the northern part, northeast part of the track there. Well, if there's an event right there, you don't want people to go that way. You want them to go the other way, away from the spill or fire, whatever it may be. 
so so the amount of funds that we're allocating is not to you know to erect a statue or something like that it is to address these significant challenges that we have in the site um, so that's something that i know that we have gotten a few questions about um, we're, we're very um, happy that that um, union school is open and you can actually physically get to the building so that that's been uh, very good so we appreciate uh, the board's understanding with delaying the opening that made a huge difference parents were very grateful for that certainly the staff and and uh, the week that it was open you know that uh, there were actually sidewalks there was less jagged metal and piles of dirt which, which is good when you're dealing with preschool age children so so you know, bringing preschool back to this side, the right side of the river, is is, is a good thing. And, and um, you know, we were just at Frank at our last mm -hmm. visit work session, um, and uh, we talked about that there. Um, a couple questions that have come up with the the financing piece of it. Um, it is a uh, hundred and forty uh, hundred and forty million dollars, which it's it's, it's five point nine five mils. Uh, and the cost of a two to a two hundred fifty thousand dollar home is, is forty three dollars and thirty nine cents. It's also important to remember the board took steps to apply for the um, uh, the OFCC, the Ohio Facility Construction Commission, the state program, the health program, which will reimburse the district for thirty up, uh, up to thirty percent reimbursement for those expenditures that are approved by OFCC. So when you look at the timing of this, there, there's some real positives to this um, in, in terms of you know what this means to the district. Um, so one of the things that, that with the health program is that will 30% could generate up to $42 million back to the district for this project. So one, the district has to spend the dollars, which if the voters approve, we will do. And then when that happens, when our number comes up in this program, which could be in the next five years, give or take, the Board of Education will receive $42 million, up to $42 million of the refund. And then that board at the time can determine what to do with those funds. So door number one could be we're going to pay down the existing debt so that everybody pays less. So that could be an option. The board could also say, let's put these dollars towards some of the things that were identified by the facilities committee, expanding HPI or taking other measures um, with that to address growth um, in, in the other buildings that aren't facing the pressure point. Um, or the district uh, board could choose to put it in the bank. So at that point in time, <laughs> it'll be up to the board to determine what they will do. We've gotten questions like, why can't you say exactly what the board will do? <laughs> Only the board, when that check arrives, will be the one to determine. So this board cannot compel that board to act a certain way. But I think that is something that is, is positive. Um, some other bright side of things, we just talked about the 42 million. We are also retiring 1.62 mills on December 31st, 2024. So, so that means on a two hundred fifty thousand dollar home, that is a reduction of eleven dollars and eighty one cents that will be coming off at the end of, of next year. So, as this goes on, um, those mills will be coming off a year later. So, I think that is, you know, that is a, a, a benefit. Um, one of the things that I, I wanted to touch on is how these bond issues work. We've gotten that question because I think there's been some well, this bond issue is going to increase the taxes year over year. And, and, and it's one of those things where I say, okay, I'm the superintendent. Don't believe me. That's fine. Let's just take a look at actually what happened with bond issues here in Perryburg. So go back to the last bond issue we had, which is HPI. So the original ballot language of HPI went on in, for a $250,000 home. Um, Original ballot language called for 2.94 mills, and it would generate an increase of $21.46 a month on the current 
forgotten all about that. In 2022, because of how taxes work in Ohio, bond issues work in Perrysburg, that $250,000 home with the 2014 HBI bond issue, the millage rate has been decreased from 2.94 mills to 1.5 mills. So the amount of mills that are being used to generate that amount by, by roughly 51%. Um, so when you look at how that works, um, that's, that has been a, a savings for homeowners as the community grows, as more people move into the district, um, everybody pays their fair share, and as a result, everybody pays less on bond issues. So this, this is an important reminder, and we've gotten those. I think people have appreciated kind of hearing that. And, you know, again, don't take my word for it, look at your tax bill. And, and, and that I think is, is significant. So when you look at the bright side, this bond issue, we understand it's, it's taking on two different issues, the elementary growth and the high school growth. The committee is you know, wrestled with that, the board wrestled with, do we fix all those things? $140 million, we understand that's a big number. But the committee was faced with, well, do we only fix the elementary? So let's say 70 million, and then we do nothing for the high school. And we allow there to be issues with how do we address the right for the high school? More portables, split shifts, all those kinds of things that we talked about. Or do we take care of that, and then we start to look around Tote and say, boy, that would be a really nice area for a more portable <coughs> classroom, and start to add classrooms, uh, trailers at all of our elementary. So, that, that there is a cost to, to doing nothing, and we'll, we'll talk about that. But $42 million rebate for this project is a pretty good value, mm -hmm. and we're on track to do that if the vote gets approved on it. Seeing how the, the, the retiring debt mills in another year are coming off 1.62 mills, that, that helps. That certainly pulls us much, much closer to what the voters approved in 2000 for not even half of this. And then when you factor in that in nine years, there was a 50% you know, or more reduction in the millage and what people are paying for the HPI levy, um, that, those, are, those are bright signs, um, you know, the, a bright, brighter side to this issue that I know we, we do have to talk to people about. So it, it <clears throat> most important, I think it will provide the Educational excellence that we come to expect, and, and I think that has been something that's voters have seen. Um, people love the fact that their home values are increasing. Not so much when there's a reappraisal, and, and we, we hear that. But when you go to sell and, um, and, and you walk away from your home in Perrysburg and you're ready to downsize, um, there's there's people that want to be in good financial status, and that adds value. Protecting that this bond issue goes a long way in, in, in doing so. Um, so the do nothing, I wanted to mention that. So you know, we talk about adding 40 trailers over the, you know, between now and 2040. As one committee member said, that's not why we come to Perrysburg to put our kids in the trailer. We come here because of the school. Um, and you know, and, and you can kind of see here the demands of lunch and recess. Uh, security ongoing concerns around the, the trailer. Um, you know, more money coming out of our general fund, and as we talked to staff, we've shared that without that revenue stream to address those classrooms, the 105, how do we get there? We will slowly begin to carve out more and more out of the general fund um, for those purposes, converting space, um, adding trailers, and that's something that um, will impact ability to add staff as we grow or program or support them as we grow. So, so there is a cost of doing nothing. And, and also, there will never be a, a less expensive time to do this project than today. So not only do you have the, the, uh, the $42 million rebate potentially coming to the district, not only do you see this, these, the, the 1.62 mills being voted, or not being voted mills, that are coming off in uh, December 31st of 2024. Um, you 
see the reduction of the millage that people will actually have to pay to generate the, the bucket for this bond issue. But we also understand that the costs are, are increasing. And here in 2018, there was a summary of the deferred maintenance aspects that this bond issue will, will address. $51 million in 2018. And when that was refreshed with base dollars uh, this past summer, um, it, it increased by $8.3 million. So if we say not today, but in three years, how much more will that be? And how fewer classrooms will we be able to get because we're spending <clears> more here? <throat> so that continues to be a challenge. And then finally, if we begin to do this, um, if the bond issue passes today, this bond issue will wrap up in 2028, 2029. Sounds a long way off, doesn't it? But it'll take that long to do these things. So if we wait three years, if we come back in a few years, that pushes that out further and further, which means we're spending more and more money in the short term to house kids, to convert classrooms, to do the things we need to do. Um, and, and then ultimately, it becomes a, a poor investment to, to continue to invest in things. Um, so, so we know that um, this is something that, that continues to be a, a concern is, you know, why now? Well, we just kind of outlined some of the financial reasons and some of the needs why now, but also getting our students into the, those 105 classrooms is important to continue. Because if not, we're pushing into 2030. Um, and, and we know that one of the things that, that safety was a huge concern, and you've heard that from the committee that made the presentation, the additional trailers. Um, we had somebody on the committee who talked about the fact that in 2040, um, with our enrollment being where it will be, as projected, that um, 2,700 students will spend part of that school year in a trailer. So either the high school cycling in and out of individual classes in a trailer or at an elementary school. Um, so, so it is, you know, something to, to think about as we look towards, you know, what kind of a, a, a school district does the community want? And that's the question um, that has been in place this whole, this whole time. So we're um, certainly grateful Ceases about needs and not wants. Um, and I think it bears worth repeating. This is an issue that's about needs and not wants. So as we kind of delve into some of these questions, we're preparing kind of a, a deeper dive into other questions on, on our net and next board meeting. Um, so we appreciate the board's, uh, you know, continued uh, support and, and dialogue uh, about this important issue. So I'll open up to any questions that sections of the presentation if you have. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, thank you. Um, again, to just reiterate what we've been talking about. But on the website, I'm wondering if we could make this a, um, almost like an elevator speech slide. So, you know, that pie chart um, was very detailed, um, showing exactly, you know, where the money's going to go and what the need is. And I think that might be, like, you can find the stuff on here, but you have to, like, really look for it. Yeah. So I'm hoping maybe there could even be a button on the website that boom right there in your face the bond issue information you know so that we get the facts out there yeah. not the you know not the facebook facts yeah not the facebook facts you know yeah. um you know that this is about it is about needs and, and what we want as a school district and how we educate our kids but that i think was that's the first time i've seen it like that um that and the safety issue with uh with the overhead view of the stadium you know, working in education, I understand that, but to see that as a parent, you know, from the bird's eye view of what it would look like if there was an incident. To walk into that stadium time and time again, most of our lives. Yes. And, and then not, you appreciate the, uh, a choke point. Right, because you know, issues. it doesn't happen in, in that won't that's happen in Pittsburgh. Well, all those other school districts and all those other states and all those other cities say the same thing. And you don't, 
obviously we don't want that to happen, but it's a possibility we need to be prepared. Um, you know, so I think that was very eye-opening because obviously anything could happen on 75 with what just happened, you know, that trailer fire, um, you know, 75 North or that semi-trailer and it just takes one accident to come off of there into the stadium. God forbid what would happen. But we need to be prepared for that. And, you know, like people, and I think just like when you're in a fire drill or something like that, those are the conversations you have to have with the public because they don't, they wouldn't know how to handle that. While the staff on site does, I think that one and this and just those facts and, you know, one slide divided into quarter or, you know, whatever, this is just the facts, ma'am. I, I was curious about something that I really don't spend any time on Facebook anymore. It scares me, but I did happen to see some comments about the, about the levy, and I was curious about their objections. Um, he said, this levy is only for buildings. It's only for capital, and it has nothing to do with anything for operations. And I said, well, isn't that what we've been so concerned about is and being yelled at my ten years on the board is that we don't plan ahead for the capital needs and here it is we've been working on this ever since I got on the board with the start of Pole Prairie so I'm not sure what that whole diatribe why that was such a complaint I mean yes there would be an operational after this, right? Because that we need a hundred and five more classrooms, you said? Right. Okay, well, so then you've got to be able to run that. I I feel like we're repeating history because I'm sure our community in the fifties were having these same concerns that we are now being able to sit in this beautiful building and it's still with us and Hopefully it will be for a lot longer, um, but that comes from caring for the buildings and and being aware that you know they they need they need care. Um, well, I, I think that's I mean I, I hear what you're saying. Part of this is the continuation of work that the board did not that long ago. They built the high school, yeah, and, 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 yeah. and finishing that board's vision because mm -hmm. that high school is meant to be expanded. Mm -hmm. So here we are now. It's time. And how many to, years to ago was that? that? 30, 21, 21, 21, 21, I mean, it's like right so. when we moved into, into the district, <clears throat> you know, and, and I think you go back to what I always, you know, one of my favorite quotes is, you know, you're entitled to your own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. And the facts are out there, and we just have to keep, keep pointing people to the facts. You're always going to have your, you know, Facebook quarterbacks, you know, think they know better than anybody else, but I invite them to have a conversation with us, uh, you know. Most people move here for the school district, and we enjoy the benefits of that. You know, my kids are no longer in school. I don't plan on selling my house anytime soon, even though I've been approached probably 10 times in the last five years, not even, last, you know, three years to sell my house. You know, and I look at houses that sell in the neighborhood, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's time to go. We're not leaving anytime soon. So for $43, yes, that's a hit, but, you know, I don't go get coffee. What's more important to you? Starbucks, your coffee, and, I, and I'm not putting it out there that people don't have budget issues, you know, and it, there comes a time and a place, you know, what's important to the community. You know, somebody did that for our children, somebody did that for mm -hmm. our, you know, my aunts, uncles, all of that, so what are we going to do for our future children? And I think it's all about the facts, and going back to the facts, and pointing them back to the facts. And if they want to argue about it, that means they just want an argument. They don't want to, they don't want to learn. Well, I think if you go back to the committee that worked on this for over a year and a half, it's not just four board, five board members mm -hmm. talking about this and the superintendent. If the community came together and said, look, here's our thoughts, here's our goals, here's what we'd like to see in our school district. So I think uh, moving forward, uh, this got good backbone for this, this whole project. I think Thanks it's important, too, to let the community know that that group of community members, those six 16 solid mm -hmm. people um, to the bat over all the options. They they talk about, well, let's just add portables. Oh, no, that stinks. And months later, they decide, no, that's not going to work. And then they 
She'd been bad about, well, let's have, what about two high school? Oh, yeah, that's not going to work. And several months later, they say, all right, that's not going to work either. So they, a lot of these suggestions that are popping up on Facebook that they think were never considered were considered. Like you said, a year and a half these guys worked on this. This was not a fly-by-night proposition. They didn't all start in agreement at the same place. Oh, no, they sure yeah. did. Yeah. I also think I'm sort of biased because I have this information. I see the need. I understand all the things that are taking place. I have a chance to ask the questions. So that's where we have to continue to get four of them seven. Get out there and let the folks know because Facebook's not going to dictate what happens to you. You know, get, get that platform to watch the platform of people in this field so that it supports what we need to do. That's why they need to be here. That's why they want to be here. So I think, again, getting this information out as best we can, going where the Lord's going to give a place. And, and, and we want the questions to come forward. We want the phone calls. We want all the superintendents, all the board members, so we can answer those questions. Now, when it comes down to, well, we just don't want to pay the tax. Got it. I understand. I understand. But the fact is, there's a need. And I think this community will come through once they have all the information, all the things that they need. Yeah, there was something that came from the state. What What is your all? Yeah, Brooke, I'm talking about, I forget that people can't see us. Um, Brooke and Tom and, and Randy, too. Are, we've always done neighborhood copies and, and little meetings, and you guys worked yourselves to the bone. Are you all allowed to do that anymore? I know there was talk yeah. that that was going to have to change. Yeah, no, that's a good question, um, Councilor Murphy. So the um, auditor of state issued guidance on you know, campaigns for public entities, including school districts and school boards, and their employees. And many of the rules that are in place and laws, we've always followed and respected those. Um, the idea of campaigning on school time, using school resources to campaign. So for me to be at this board meeting and say we urge all voters to vote yes, that is not permissible. But to provide information, we need 105 classrooms. We need the, the, this, the bond issues work this way. Hall Prairie's have been, you know, the, the millage has been reduced 51%. We're permitted to talk about the facts. Um, but we aren't allowed to cross that line and, and to, you know, to advocate during school school time, which we, we never have. We send out reminders to staff um, about the, the fact that well, you're on the clock and you can't campaign. And not only for school issues, but you couldn't bring in, you know, for state representative to hand out bumper stickers during class time. So it's not just school issues, but it's a whole variety of issues. Um, so, so that is something that is. What about outside of school time? Uh, you... outside, outside of school time, you can, you can, um, you know, if you were to host a coffee at your home at 7 p.m. and you want to invite your neighbors to it, that is permissible. Um, you know, and somebody from the campaign could be there and say, I'm Yes, that's permissible. Um, there's been a little bit of question about, you know, the um, superintendent and treasurer's um, day, work day, being seven days of work, 20 to 24 hours. Yeah. So there's been some thoughts about, well, if you attend that on a Thursday night at 7 p.m. in someone's front room and you say then, oh, yes, there's some back and forth about is, is that permissible because, you know, yes, I am a school superintendent or manager school treasurer. Um, our, our work days are not clearly defined by bells. We get that. <laughs> but we also enjoy First Amendment rights still. I think we still do. And, yeah. and that's something yeah. that, um, that that I think people have pushed back a little bit and said, wait a minute. If it's a Sunday and it's you know, in the afternoon and I want to advocate, you should be able to do that. Um, you know, so, so I think it's for us, it's just a reminder of keeping you know, the, the, the thoughtful, respectful of the law, follow the law, um, which we should always do. Um, and then you know, the, the questions come up. We've always played it 
straight with informational. And everything I've shared here is an informational um, because there isn't anything that I'm advocating or I'm saying, you know. Um, but it, it, it leads you to a conclusion that yes, we are overcrowded. Yes, we are adding portables. Yes, that is costly. And this committee worked on another alternative that, that may be better. Here's why they feel it's better. That, that is staying. Challenge is look at this district. Just drive around town the main arteries. The traffic's crazy. It's a growing and continues to increase. Not only our schools, but on, on the roads, and the police and fire and schools have to react to all of that. And I, I think even look back to the stadium. Look at the crowds that we have 1,700 students in our high school. That's increased. The number of folks using the restrooms has increased. The number of people getting in and out of the gates increased. Increase. So you've got to change something. Safety. Right, but you guys didn't mention it to that stadium. There's only one big mass of interest. Mm -hmm. So I think everything that's been said and done is, is appropriate to take to the voters. But the thing is, too, oh, you go foot to foot, door to door, there are a lot more houses out there. Yeah, <laughs> that's hard you to do. Need, you almost see an airplane drop, too. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. I'll have, I'll have Patrick come in and <laughs> he can go. fly over for us. <laughs> and and we'll and we'll then find like the yeah, yeah, that would be, yeah. Um, Ms. Lambert, to piggyback on what you said earlier, that's a great point about the operational aspect of this. So, if you recall, there was a subcommittee that focused on the operational impact of this decision. So, one of the reasons why there are four elementary schools that will exist after this bond issue is because of those operational mm -hmm. expenses. We have the same footprint that we have before. Now we're operating five elementary schools, and that means five, um, five uh, cafeteria staff. That means five different, you know, um, secretaries. That means five different principals. Five. You start all of a sudden racking up those operational mm -hmm. costs. Yes, we will need additional funds in the future for additional staff as we grow. But we also recognize that that the costs are. They were very thoughtful about that. So, of all the different options, this was, um, I think, in the, you know, an economically based decision trying to control costs. So, so they, they did pay attention to that. And, and those incremental costs are being discussed right. in our finance committee meetings and in the boardroom and in Mr. Drew's presentations mm -hmm. with the five year forecast. There's nothing magical or significantly incremental. That we're going to see in next year's five year forecast when this bond issue passes. We're already talking about the growth in number of teachers and, and, and support staff to help support the growth of this district. Those costs are out there. We're talking about it. Yeah, I think the other thing, too, the type of school district that we expect and we want here in Fredericksburg comes with cost. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have the mission of all students, all needs, all abilities. And so look at the real world right now. Why is the food created? So it does come with a cost. You know, the expectations and don't move too quickly. Well, I think about expectations, maybe this comment's too cute, but back in my day when we used to be campers and I'd have to set up my RV in the driveway to get ready to go, and I'd be really conscious, I gotta walk this out here for more than 24 hours. You know, there's a certain look and expectation. I translate that into, I don't think we're the type of community that then wants 40 portables. 52. I'm sorry, 52 portables. 52 portables sitting in front of our schools. <laughs> Nor do we have staff that want to work in 52 portable. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's, that's, I mean, but that is, think about it. A retention issue. I mean, we, nobody, nobody wants to, while we use it for space, it is a very difficult thing to do. If you've never worked in a portable and had to deal with children in and out, you have I no idea. I can't it's, imagine. I would not. You waste so much I would imagine time. I can imagine that with 52. Yeah. And that's not really just a big yes yeah. with safety. Yeah, yeah the yeah. safety of it. Yes. And that's why we heard this presentation. That's why I appreciate the committee members' work that kind yeah. of kept us aligned with what I keep repeating my three tent poles when we look at what needs it does support safety, the educational excellence, and financial stewardship of this district. Right. And this levy and this timing and this this uh, ask, it follows right along with those three tent poles. Well, it's forward thinking, too. Yeah. Right. Well, 
To your point, Ray, when you're talking about the money, I still think one of the most powerful things that this district does, thank you, Kelly, that um, is that we educate our students per student cost under the state average, under comparable school averages. That to me, I, I mean, to me, that's just treasure or magic. I don't know how y'all do that, but that's that's. <coughs> That is incredible that, and that comes from everybody branching that. I mean, I always brag about our operations, but it's not, and that encompasses what probably 90% of our school, but it, it's still, that is, that's some powerful leadership on your own part. And, and again, it's really facts. amazing. Facts, not Facebook facts, not alternate facts, but true data. We should make that a thing. Okay. Any any other comments or questions? No. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Thank for you. That. All right. We're going to move to the consent agenda. It looks like Mr. Christie's been very busy still. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've got a few personnel actions to take here. The consent agenda is going to cover items five through seven of the agenda. May I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? Mm -hmm. Dr. Fulman, Dr. Rector. Question or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Pullman? Yes. Dr. Refford? Yes. Ms. Larimer? Yes. Mr. Bennington? Yes. Motion to consent agenda carries. And then finally, item eight, any board discussion, any new items with raising for the benefit of the board? you're hearing none, we will adjourn and then do a brief tour of the building. Appreciate uh, folks hosting us. Still, it's always fun in these months to come out yeah. into the buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly as the school year started. Did, did you see what you Probably not. Yeah, but, no, I heard a couple of okay. in the hallway. All right. No, All right. I heard one. And I know the staff appreciates yeah. the board coming out in the evening, so thank you for that. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah. No, I actually did hear a little one. He's like, Hi, Dad, love you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Between then and junior, I'm adult again, and it's all good. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love right. that one yeah. commercial where the lady says, "Oh, the sidewise hugs started." <laughs> <laughs> so, so that, that, that resonated, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Over the weekend, yeah. Okay, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So, moved. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Slammer. Second. Dr. Rufford, that was emphatic. <laughs> Roll call, please. Ms. Larimer. <laughs> yes. Dr. Rufford. Yes. Mr. Pullman. Yes. Mr. Bennington. Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you.